Welcome to the Motive Podcast, everybody. And uh, happy Thanksgiving. So hopefully you're listening to this on uh, in a couple days from now. And we just thought we'd jump on. So we got Steve, Jordan, and Sadie, and myself, Shaden. Uh, w- uh, of course, we have to do the cliche thing is talk about gratitude, right? It's Thanksgiving. Uh, and I, I feel already, though, I think it needs to be, I love to talk about like the, the doctrine of things, so where it comes from. And so when I think about gratitude, I often think about, I, I immediately go to the Holy Ghost and I think about this idea of in order to be, in order to feel the Holy Ghost, you have to be present. So you have to be now, right? The Holy Ghost doesn't live yesterday. He doesn't live tomorrow per se. He's only, he's only here. And if he's our way of connecting with God, then in order to connect with God, like we have to be present. We have to be still. And there, there is no other force on earth that I know of, no other attribute, no other, no other character trait that I know of to when I, when I jump into it, that gets me still more than gratitude. So gratitude to me, and I would love to hear your thoughts, but, and, and, and I know each of you has something else to say on gratitude, but for me, gratitude is that ability to center oneself in what is to start recognizing what is rather than what isn't. Whereas Satan's always trying to say what isn't and, and, and see the scarcity of things. Whereas the abundance of things is, is a beautiful place to be in. And so I know president Monson one time, um, he said that, uh, gratitude I think is, and I should, I should have looked it up, but it's the, it is the foundation of all other virtues, something like that. I'm sure somebody will help me on that on the quote, but basically he alluded to the idea that, that gratitude is this, is like, is the, is the soil within which all other virtues can grow and without it charity can't really blossom without it patience can't really blossom and i think that's why it's because without gratitude i can't even begin a process of seeing where i am and or seeing what is and without that how can i even move does that make sense yeah so anyway so happy thanksgiving everyone i think uh i think we got some cool things to say but yes gratitude is a huge part of of loving ourselves and accepting ourselves as well so what are your thoughts steve well you kind of took all my ideas oh <laughs> i'm just kidding <laughs> but no i i I've, I've thought of that same i think it's a conversation you and i have had before for sure um but i think it's hard to well i know it's hard to be grateful and fill in the blank with emotion whether it's anxious depressed um we'll, we'll focus in on those two it's hard to be grateful and, and depressed or anxious at the same time. And I heard something somewhere and don't totally quote me on it, but go look it up if you want that. Uh, it's you, you literally like, as far as the brain goes, you can't be depressed and, and, and anxious at the same time. They come from a similar part in our brain. You mean grateful at the same time? Sorry. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. Did I say depressed? We can absolutely be anxious and depressed. Sorry, 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 <laughs> depressed and, and grateful. There we go. Thank you. At the same time. But, uh, because just like w- with what you were saying, with that it being the soil of all other virtues, like the second we start to recognize gratitude and acknowledge it in our lives, there's other things that become more still. And it's not that it fixes them per se, and it's not that it remedies the initial issue, but it at least gives us an opportunity to shift our perspective, to sit there and recognize like, okay, this is what I have, or this is what I'm grateful for. This is what's been given to me rather than this is what I'm you know, with, with depression, this is what I'm grieving. This is what I'm not understanding. Why is this weight just hitting and uh, hitting me and sitting on me? Mm. Um, but I do think it does. It allows for us to pause and then recognize like that, that not just things aren't as bad as we, we think they are, but it allows us to shift and think of them differently. I think you touch on something really important, which is a lot of times when we think of gratitude and we think of practicing gratitude, we expect that it's almost a scale. Like, so I'm feeling really depressed or anxious and I've got all these things going on in my life. And if I have gratitude, it's going to off like offset it. Mm. But having gratitude doesn't mean that you will no longer feel um, some of those other emotions that maybe you don't like. But it it gives you the fuel to be buoyed up despite the suffering. Um, Michael J. Fox, I, I love his quote. He was in an interview once and it. He had said, gratitude sustains optimism. And I oh, just, yeah, I remember him saying that. I, I just love it because it's so true. It doesn't take away, I, you look at his situation in particular, and it's like having gratitude isn't going to change what he's facing, but it allows you to find 
meaning in the suffering or just it allows the suffering to not be the only thing you're experiencing. Awesome. Mm-hmm. Jordan, Grat- what are your thoughts, man? Gratitude does two things for me. Okay. One is it strips me of my ego. I can't have pride and have ego at the same time as being grateful. So it takes all of those little prideful ego things as far as first world problems or um, frustrations or anxieties, whatever it is that I'm dealing with in my head, and it strips those away. And two, it reminds me that I am small and I am finite because at the same time I'm grateful, I also am thankful. And who am I grateful to, right? And for me, it always connects back to God, that I'm always grateful for what is around me. And it takes that ego and pride and just sheds it in the moment. And I get like this wave of just thankfulness come over me of everything that I have going or that I have been given or opportunities or doors that have opened themselves. It takes everything that I forget about, right? We, there's a lot of scriptures that say we are slow to remember, right? And I think that's what gratitude does is it makes us remember. Mm. Jordan, will you tell me more about how that works? Like if I'm, I'm picturing my head. Which part? Just the, how, how gratitude strips you of that pride and that ego and allows you to feel thankful because I'm picturing my head clients that I've spoken to that they'll tell me things like. I know I have all these great things and I don't have it as bad as somebody else. And, uh, you know, they'll make those comparisons to like, well, I have a nice warm house and a car and all of these luxuries that we have in this first world and, um, or third world. What what are we? First. First. (laughs) I don't know. Sometimes the hierarchy goes different. America. (laughs) America. America. All I know. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) It doesn't matter. There's no way to know. Anyway, everyone, she's an amazing therapist, I promise. (laughs) She may not have paid attention in other classes, but (laughs) psychology, she killed it. I killed it in this. (laughs) I I am human. I have flaws, but I am not a flawed human. That a girl. Um, Yeah, yeah. So I'm really grateful that you can admit Uh that. Yeah, yeah. I'm just keeping it real. (laughs) So (laughs) with that, we're a little derailed now, but with that, how do you, how does what you say apply? How do they put how do people put that into practice so that they're not feeling as though they don't have a right to be bothered by the things that bother them just because they have things to be grateful for? Yeah. Yeah, just answer that, Jordan. Yeah. <laughs> well, I guess that's a hard question. <laughs> I guess for me how it puts me in the present and the reason it strips me of my ego is because for a brief moment, I stopped grinding and I focus on what I got because of the grind, mm. right? Like, it, as, and I mean, there are a lot of people do this, but for me specifically, there's so much time that I spend focused on what I'm doing next or what opportunity or who am I talking to or what email I'm sending or what door I'm trying to open. And I'm so focused on what's coming next in order to help prepare and provide that every so often I get smacked in the face with just take time and and be grateful for what has come because of the grind. And so for a minute, I just stop grinding and I stop thinking about what's next. And I just enjoy what that has already brought me. Mm. Not being present seems to be a real thing. Yeah, my, uh, you know, my dad, as he as he went through his disease, there was this real interesting uh, situation that happened in Roy. So I'm from Roy. And in Roy itself, there were people coming from Idaho, from Wyoming, from all over Utah to do this. There was a there was an actual group of people who had ALS that met at the Roy Library. Like it just happened to be at Roy, in Roy. And so he would he would show up and here there'd be all these men and, and women and they'd all every and they'd come with their spouses and all of them had ALS. And if you guys don't know about ALS. ALS is a, it's a beast and it will there, if you get it, there's time if women usually don't last super long when they, when they get it, the muscle, it it tears down the muscle a lot quicker in women. They just don't have as much muscle mass anyway. Whereas other men, they might get it, get get ALS and it can take 11 to even 15 years, sometimes even longer. Um, And then there's another form where my dad had it, that it takes your throat a lot quicker, which means you're going to have a little more complications with nutrition and a lot of other things. And and so he only lasted for around three years. Well, this phenomenon would occur where they would show up to group and they, when they would talk about how long they've had their disease, none of the, we'll just say men, cause it's predominantly a men's illness. But my mom told me, she said the men 
would never ever want to switch their case with somebody else. Like they would see these guys that again, he, it'd be easy to think, man, that guy's been alive for 10 years with this. He's, he's, that's 10 more years he's had with his family. Whereas my dad's thinking I'm going to be gone in like a year from now or whatever. And yet none of them would, would change it. And I think that in, in other words, in gratitude, they be, you, we become, we become knowledgeable about our own suffering as we start to accept more and more that this is something that is for me. But I can also look at other people and see that in that case, maybe their stuff is worse. But instead of, instead of it invalidating, my, in, invalidating me, I can actually use it to actually have more gratitude for what I am uh, enduring, for what I am going through, for what I do have. So that's what, that's what answers that question for me is I, I like to look at people in, in a comparative way at times to keep myself in balance, to, no, to make sure that I am still not in a pitiful place. But at the same time, I have the other side of the balance, which is, but this is still meaningful for me in my life because this is hard. Like this is still a lot that I have. And so I think a lot of people error when they deny their suffering, deny what they're going through in the, in the name of, well, some kid in Africa is struggling with this. Like, how dare I feel weak with this? And it's like, wait, like if that kid from Africa came, he might feel certain, certain things too. Or you assume that kid in Africa is also suffering. Like maybe he likes what he's doing, you know, it's all relative. But yeah, that was a, that, that story hit me a long time ago with my mom that our, our situations are our own. And the more that we, the more that we learn to, to lean into those things, it, it becomes the, the meaning is where we don't want to give it up. Cause again, if you give up, if my dad gave up his and said, I want that guys, now he has to give up the meaning that he's drawn from his, which again, gratitude and meaning. I think that's what I'm hearing today too. There's a lot of, there's a lot of parallelism in, in that. Which I think answers your question, mm -hmm. right? Somebody who says, well, I am grateful for all that I have but yet I still have all these depressions, anxieties, like, so what if I'm grateful? And, and to my answer to that is, well, then what meaning does it give you? Mm -hmm. How can you be grateful and yet also dismiss it at the same time? I think you're happy True. you have it, but are you really grateful that it's there, right? Because if you really tap into that gratitude, I don't think you can have both at that same moment to be grateful and yet also it's not good enough. Yeah, and I think we tend to see that a lot with silver linings. Where it's like, oh, because this happened, oh, yeah. Like that 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 undermines the gratitude part. It undermines what am I gaining from this right now in this moment that is going to allow me to have gratitude. It's a it reminds me of I, I always tell my clients comparison um kills compassion. So where comparison lives, compassion dies. And this gratitude component is so important when it comes to that comparison. Because what I'm hearing is that we can um, make an accurate estimation of what we're going through when we're reflecting on what other people are going through. But it doesn't mean we're diminishing. Mm -hmm. um, and it allows us to be reflective and say, huh, how does this work for my benefit? Right. Yeah. And, and, and I think a, a question that's similar to this that I've been thinking of, and I've been thinking of a couple of people that have asked the question, some clients of mine that have said, how can people get up, whether it's in church, generally it's been brought up that it's in church <clears throat> in a talk or, a, you know, sharing a, a message over the pulpit. Like how can, how can people can say they're grateful for what they have, the, the trials that they have? And I think that's what you're talking about. Like when people say that, I know I've, I've at times in, in the spot that I was in, either symbolically or actually rolled my eyes, not out of like disregard for them but it's like how it's like come on like how is that possible but i think that's what we're talking about right is allowing that acceptance to come in allowing that acknowledgement of like wow this is maybe not as uh, not saying it's not as bad as it could be but uh allowing it to really set in that i wouldn't necessarily trade this and look at what meaning is providing for me i think that's what tends to be meant if that's how you'd say it like what that's what people mean when they're saying well i'm grateful for the trials that i have mm not necessarily wanting to trade them, but I know there's other people that have been spiteful in, in hearing that where it's just because they're, they're not, they're not in that spot. They're fighting against those trials that they have. And that's fine. That's the spot we're in. Is this making sense though? Yeah. Yeah. But I, I think it is a hard place to navigate because I know there's been people in, in my office at times that they have felt very strongly and, and no judgment to them because they're in that spot of struggling. And, and the best thing I could say is to, to keep struggling to not necessarily retreat, but to 
to understand that there is there is peace in that spot of gratitude and acknowledging what meaning it can provide for you. I, I'm one of those people that you'd be rolling your eyes at. Well, I roll my eyes to me is, uh, also. <laughs> <laughs> because I, I'm very much, I, I, I have a deep appreciation for the struggles that I faced and the trials that I faced. I just, oof, uh, love might sound weird, but I, a deep appreciation for him because it, it forced me to be in a position where I was able to look at myself and say, okay, say, do you claim to be this person who believes these things, who thinks like this? Now you have an opportunity to show up like that. Other people get to suppose that like, this is who I am. And I had to prove it not to anyone else, but to me. And so it, it changed when I applied meaning to the struggle that I was facing or the trial that I was facing. Um, when I applied meaning to it, on the other end came out gratitude. And so it works both ways. We can have gratitude for the thing that we're facing, but in facing it and actually coming up against it, we develop gratitude. And maybe, yeah, and then gratitude develops us. Like that's mm -hmm. a, you know, I think that's how virtues work is, you know, president or elder Bednar has talked about how charity, you don't possess charity, it possesses you. And I think the same thing with like, with what you just said is can gratitude actually start possessing me rather than me possessing it like something I developed. And again, we can develop it. We have to use our own agency to like use our mind to focus on what we, what we can. But I think in the end, you talk to, you talk to anybody that, that, uh, you know, has, has used this and practiced it as over and over and over in their life. I got a good friend, his name's Jake. And if Jake, you're listening to this, I, I've shared this with you, but he is, he's just a, a naturally, and maybe he'd say, maybe it isn't so natural, whatever it is for him, natural or effort, he exudes it in his soul. Like he's a grateful, you, you know, you're seen around him, not because he's super, he's not going to, he's not always going to turn all empathic and validating with you or whatever. He just sees you like, and, and, and there's a gratitude there within him that, it's just natural. I guess I have to say it natural. It feels natural. Uh, and, and it will, we'll get done hanging out and then I'll get a text from him that, that just says, Hey, thanks for your time. Thanks for, thanks for talking to me today. And it's like, man, I didn't text him back, you know, <laughs> like I should have. And, uh, I just, it's a, it's a powerful, powerful thing. I got a question for you. My mom asked me this once and maybe I've shared it with you, Steve, I think maybe, but for all three of you, how do you know? So if gratitude's so amazing, how do you know that you have enough of it? Because the Lord himself has actually said, and nothing doth, doth, doth man offend me more than not having gratitude. You guys know that scripture? He actually mm -hmm. says, like, it, it offend, nothing offends me more than one who doesn't have gratitude. So how do we know we have enough? I don't... I don't <clears throat> is there, like, a... It seems weird to me, like, there's an amount to fill. Like I know, right? Quota. Like, so how how do you know? Like, if if we're if if it's offensive to, is it just all or nothing? No, and nothing. We can't do all or nothing, Shaden. <laughs> yeah, I don't. I don't think it's percentages of how much gratitude you have. It's who you're grateful to. Mm -hmm. okay. that, to me, that's how I, I see love that, that. Right? I love it's not. That. I can be grateful or not grateful, but being grateful for what I I have in my life is different than who I give credit to. Not only am I grateful for it, I'm grateful that I I was blessed or I was given opportunities or I, I had the parents I had or whatever it is, and I give credit to God for that, right? So it's not only being grateful, it's it's giving credit uh, of what I'm grateful for and who mm -hmm. I'm grateful to. So I could even say, so even in that, how would you know you did it enough? I Maybe when it feels full. I don't know. The thing that keeps coming, I'm like, that's weird. I have an answer if you want one. Yeah, well, I have an illustration of something, but I'll come back to it. Give us the answer. So I think, and again, I'm not a general authority. You made it sound like you were Psalm, really authoritative in that. Psalm 23. <laughs> well, you know, when you shave your head. Like that you just knew. But when and you now shave you're... your head, it does it, I'm telling you. Okay. That's what my cousin told me. At least. <laughs> so he's over here sitting. So Psalm 23. Anybody know it? The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not, not want. Yes. I shall not want. Look at me. So I think I think that's the answer <laughs> is when you when you stop wanting, you have enough gratitude. Ooh, and I'm not saying wanting from a side of that you're hopeless, like, oh, stop hoping. No. You know, it's more. 
can I stop wanting? Hmm. And, and, it, and that scripture actually goes on to say, the Lord leadeth me beside still waters and into green pastures. And I heard a, I heard a really cool little talk the other day, a little thing on Instagram that this lady talked about Jerusalem and, and, and I had just been there, right? So I was there just a year ago. And I remember she, she talked about the desolation of what it is. Like Jerusalem's a beautiful city, but when you get outside of it, I mean, it's no joke. Like it makes Wyoming look like a rainforest. It is, it's seriously like zero green. It's just desolate. The Dead Sea is dead for a reason. I mean, it's it's bad. And so when it talks about the Lord, I think a lot of people, when they hear that scripture, like they think of the Lord leading them along like this beautiful, honestly, like Garden of Eden paradise. And it's like, that's where he, I'm just always in it. But what if you thought of it of like your daily life was walking through the wilderness and you have these sheep with you, you got your family, your kids, your, everything with you. And he's leading you beside, he's leading you towards these tiny little green pieces that you would see in the wilderness. And there's just enough, there's just enough bounty for, there for your sheep to eat, for a little bit of water, rest up. And then what do you have to do? You have to go again in faith and you have to leave that and start walking again across desolation, hoping that God will lead you just towards to exactly enough that you need to that next place of green and, and, and water and oasis. That's not going to be massive, but just enough for you. And to me, that's that's the epitome of I shall not want. I he can I accept the fact that what's been given is is sufficient for my needs, is mm-hmm. enough, and that even the breath that I have, the the eyes that I have to see, every you know how much we just take for granted that it's all enough, and so gives me a lot to ponder. I think I conflate gratitude with appreciation. Expand. So. I play this game with myself. It, it's very similar to when you're in therapy and you are exploring anxieties or self beliefs, and it's the what if game of like, okay, if this happened, then what are you afraid of? And then what? And then what? And you get to this root of whatever. But I I do that with gratitude. So let's suppose I'm driving down the road and I see every morning, every morning I come to work. And I see beautiful mountains like every morning. And so I say this little prayer in my head. I'm like, oh, Heavenly Father, thank you for the mountains. They're beautiful. And I think, oh, I'm so grateful for those. And I, okay, let's be more specific. Why I'm so grateful that I see the beauty in those. Okay, even more specific. I'm so grateful that when I see the mountains, I see that they're beautiful. And I think of the Savior. And I think of the world being created. I'm so grateful that... When I see the mountains and I think of the creation, I think of how much God must love me and how important I am to him. And all the while I'm learning about me, I'm learning about um, who I am. It strengthens my identity in relation to God. But I've found that gratitude for me is often synonymous with appreciation. So you're like layering your gratitude, uh-huh. like you're seeing through it for each connection that and leading it to you. Yeah. And ultimately, as I'm looking at me, yeah, I'm, I'm reflecting on that. I'm, I'm not alone in isolation. It's not just me, but I am a daughter of God. I am I love that. a part of something bigger and yeah. Yeah. And look at how that develops your relationship with, with God. Mm-hmm. And then that sense of connection, right? Like I think of if I, when my kids come home from school, I'm like, hey, you know, how, what, what did you like at school today? Oh, you know, it was fun at recess. And then like you're saying, like with what you do willingly on your side without that immediate response from God, where God might be, okay, Sadie, what do you like about the mountains? And I ask my kid like, okay, what did you like about recess? And they might get a little deeper and then it develops that connection, right? And they might get a little deeper. It's like, okay, I played with Susie. And oh yeah, Susie's fun. Susie's nice. She likes art like me. And like it, it develops that connection more, which, I mean, look at how that's going to amp up everything else, right? Like faith, uh, gratitude becomes more of an, an attitude. Like it's something that is just applied in every single way. And uh, the connection there is going to be worth more than we can ever imagine, right? Not feeling lonely. Not feeling that we are not seen. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I want to finish this with a challenge. It came into my mind. I, you know, this last couple of weeks, I've focused a lot in my office on helping people see what they actually want. And I did a few podcasts even on it, talked about it. And instead of, instead of people focusing on what they don't want, 
And one of the biggest things that occurred in session that I wouldn't have ever been able to predict was seeing people resist their traits, seeing people realize when I, I would ask a question, what does that, you know, Jordan, what does that say about you that you even, that you even want to have such a great relationship? Like, what does that say? And, and it's, it's honestly like cakewalk answer. It's like, it says, I care about people and all these things. And yet the people in front of me, a lot of the time struggled to own it and to actually say that is who I am. Like I do care about people. I am honest. I am hardworking. I, I do sacrifice for my family. I do care so much about God. I do want to change. I, I mean, it, the list goes on and on and on. And there's a, yet, sadly, there's this hesitation to own it that that's, that's part of me. And gr if gratitude is the essence of seeing things as they really are and seeing things as, as things are in, and are in my life, then that's part of you. And you need to own it. It's not cocky. Cocky is just making sure everybody else sees it about you. That's cocky, right? But being strong, being a powerful light into this world, liberating others, it's by own, you can't do that if you don't own the power that you already have. And every one of you, I don't care who you are, what you've gone through, what mistakes you've made. The only reason you even feel emotion to begin with is because you care deeply, is because you actually have traits, you have values, you have strengths. And without those, you wouldn't, you wouldn't feel any kind of emotion. You wouldn't be listening to this podcast. You wouldn't care about anything. So the fact that you do care no, shows you who you are. And I challenge you over this little week of gratitude that we sometimes set apart. I want you to own that for yourself and do it however you want to write it down, do whatever, but start owning some things that are you sound good. I like it. Yep. Okay. Thanks everyone. We'll see you on the next podcast. Have a Thanksgiving. Yeah.